Welcome to Power Yoga with Melinda, your power core series. In this episode, we're going to do a crow-based core workout, and then we're also going to practice our crow pose a number of different ways. So the core exercise that we're doing are gonna really warm our body and prepare ourselves for crow pose. So let's get started. For today's class, if you like to have blocks, to help support you as you're trying your crow pose, then feel free to have those. Otherwise, you just need your lovely strong bodies and your mat. So let's warm up just a little bit before we get started. Let's take a few cat cows before we work into the core. Come to your tabletop, draw your navel to your spine. So this is core work just as it is. Firm your forearms into the midline. Grip your finger pads, take an inhale. And then exhale it out. <sighs> Inhale, cow pose, release your belly, lift your gaze. Exhale, cat, firm your upper arm bones in as you gaze back behind you. Inhale, cow pose, drop your belly. Exhale, cat, all the while gripping with your finger pads, pressing firmly through the hands. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat, really press down through the base knuckles as you grip, graze back behind you. Take a couple more. On your own, find your breath, find some flexion in your spine, flexion and extension, shoulder blades open and close. And then come back to your neutral spine. Take a flip of your wrists and just rock a little from side to side, maybe back in front. And then as you tuck your toes, you can launch back just a little more. Find a little space through your wrists. And then bring your wrists back through center. This time, sit back a little further to take most of the weight into your hips. And then flip your palms over. Get a little stretch. A little wrist flexion. We're always in wrist extension. It feels good to flip them over the other way. And then roll it out. And then let's get started on our core. Come to lying on your back. Right away, draw your navel to your spine. See if you can flatten out that low part of your back. Stack your knees over your hips and then find your crow pose, your supine crow. Take an inhale, bring your elbows up to meet your knees, your knees to meet your elbows and hold here. We'll hold here for 10, but you're gonna be shaking if you're doing it right. Press your elbows into the tops of your thighs, your thighs back into your elbows. You've got eight more seconds. Seven, lift the shoulders higher, six. Everything squeezes to the midline, five. We take crunches in four, three, two, and one. Keep your hands as they are, lower your shoulders, take an inhale, and then exhale. Tap your elbows to your knees. See if you can keep your knees directly over your hips so you're lifting your shoulders and your elbows up to meet your knees versus tucking your knees in. We'll take that in just a few minutes. Find this motion, big exhales as you lift, emptying out the belly. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lift. Really feel the shape in your body. Muscle memory from when we get upside down on our hands. We're here for four. We take it out and in in three, two, and one. This time as you lengthen, everything comes to a hover, like a handstand, but on your back. And then exhale, crunch it in. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crunch it in. You've got six more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crunch. You've got five, crunch it in, lengthen. Everything meets in the midline. Your tailbone can come up off the ground. You've got three, two, one more. Lengthen long and crunch it in. Squeeze the knees in, relax your head down. Back of your neck is probably screaming. Now we have to do that to the side. <laughs> so once you've had a little rest, come back to your supine crow pose, extend your left leg long, bring your left elbow to your right knee. 
you can prance your tricep of your right hand on the floor. You're here for eight, seven, six, five, switch it out in four, three, two, and one, switch it out, right elbow to left knee, the tricep of your left hand on the floor. Hover your right foot, you're here for eight, seven. Keep the shoulders lifted, six, five. Yogi bicycles in four, three, two, and one. Take it right and left, right, and left, so the entire length of your spine is on the mat. You're twisting from your navel, lifting your shoulders and your armpit up to meet your knee, really working your side obliques right and left. You've got four more each side. Keep the shoulders lifted, three, two, flex hard through the feet. Keep the legs active, one more each side. Ha, ah, knees come into the chest. Ah, rock and roll the length of your mat two or three times. This gives your spine a massage, but also an opportunity for you to catch your breath. And then come back to your tabletop position. So we're going to take a little drill that combines your core work as well as a little hamstring and glute work. From here, find your strong tabletop grip with your finger pads, press down through your base knuckles, draw your navel to your spine, tuck your toes, inhale, hover your knees off the mat. Keep your neck long and then exhale, extend the left leg back behind you. Tuck it back behind the right leg. And from here, we're gonna take eight lifts towards the ceiling, lift and tap. We've got eight, tap, seven, Tap, six, tap. Keep the knee to a hover. If you need to drop it down for just a minute, do that. You've got four more on this side. Four, three, flex through the left toes. Two, and one. Drop the knees down. Oh, shake it out. Get right back in. We've got the other side. Tuck your toes. Suck the navel into the spine. Hover the knees. Take an inhale. Exhale, extend the right leg back behind you. Tuck it in behind the left. You've got eight more of these. Lift and tap, engaging the right hamstring and glute, floating the left toes, keep the neck long. You've got four more here, four, three. You can do it, two, and one. Keep the knees to a hover, tap it out for eight. Seven, so strong. Keep the navel and ribs in. Five, four, three, two, and one. Whew. Child's pose. <laughs> Feels good to get off those hands, off those shoulders. <sighs> we finished with the core part of it. <laughs> now let's move on to practicing. Crow pose. Now that we've warmed up our shoulders, our arms, warmed up our wrists as well, you can also give them an extra little roll or two. And we'll move into crow pose. So if you need your blocks, be sure and have them handy. When I first started, I liked to have it up in front of me just in case I felt like I was going to fall. So to set up for crow pose, Spread your fingertips wide, grip with your finger pads, press down through your base knuckles so you have that firm, solid hasta banda, and then firm your forearms into the midline. Come up onto your toes, bend your arms, find some chaturanga arms, bend your elbows so that your elbows stack over your wrists. You can stay here, lift one foot, lift two, or maybe you try and float both. Engage your core, engage your collarbone and pecs by squeezing your elbows towards the midline. And then you can balance here. The great thing about the block is whatever height you need it on, you can rise it there. So if you're worried about falling forward, bring the forehead to the block. 
and try it there. And then as you gather up a little courage, each time you can lower the block to the lower setting until you feel like you don't need it anymore. You can set it aside. You can let that anxiety go. So that's your crow pose that way. We're also going to try crow pose just the way we did it in our tabletop. So a one-legged crow with a little cross, little eagle legs in your crow pose. So to set up for this, just as we did for our core work, tuck your toes, draw your left leg behind your right, and then I like to walk my hands up to meet my legs. You can do it the other way. Create that shelf, position your knee on your forearm, lift one leg, and then maybe you can shift your weight a little more to the right. You can lift both, even if it's just for a second. And then try it on the other side. Hands spread wide, forearms firmed in. Tuck the right leg behind the left. I like to walk my hands up. Create that shelf. Shift your weight to the left side. Lift one foot, then the other. Woo! And there you go. There's your crow pose. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me, friends. If you feel like you need some more core work, check out any of the other videos in the core, in the Power Core series, rather, or join me for a yoga flow or a stretch and release. Thank you for so much for joining me for this short core and crow class. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste, friends.